um, out there. But I think just that that boom call makes you makes you present in their head too. So when all this all the dust settles, it's going to be a lot easier for us to like reach out, um, you know, ask for help with business. morning how's everyone today glad everybody come out and join us this morning so uh, my name is Joe Silo if we haven't met already uh, hopefully I met a lot of people by now um, but just want to take a quick second to introduce myself again as the new MCA at KW Philadelphia Philadelphia um, and we had some conversations on Friday about the new stimulus package um, and we had a had a nice long got a close to an hour and a half conversation about some of the new items that are in effect and some of the opportunities out there for realtors, self-employed individuals, sole proprietors, and independent contractors of how they can take advantage of some of the stimulus package that is out there. So we thought after our call, uh, we had a lot of good conversation, a lot of good chats going on, and we thought it'd be a good idea to bring on some other experts in the area and get some opinions from them as well. So what we did is we reached out to some of the CPAs that we work with and that we're familiar with and thought it'd be a good idea to bring them on. So we reached out to Scott Kriegel uh, with Kriegel and Company, Warren Edelman with um, Cantor, Novak and Pike, and Jacob Cohen with Jacob Cohen and Company. So what I'd like to do is take a quick moment to introduce the three of them and ask them if they give us a little uh, you know, background on their, of themselves, introduce themselves, and then we can move on to some of the uh, conversations we're going to have today. So, Jacob, I see your picture right here. Why don't you jump on and, and start with your introduction? Sure, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, just a quick intro. Again, my name is Jacob Cohen. Uh, I started uh, my accounting firm about five years ago, Jacob Cohen and Company. We've grown. We're about uh, 10 full-time employees now, uh, located uh, near 16th and Walnut. Uh, we work with a lot of real estate professionals, small businesses, startups, and high net worth individuals. I've uh, been really active with these, uh, I guess, you know, everything that came out in the last week or two. Really, uh, usually I'm just doing tax returns this time of year. Instead, I'm almost doing nonstop calls about the PPP you know, and some other, and the stimulus and unemployment and other benefits. So just looking forward to speaking with everyone. Great. Thanks a lot, Jacob. And Warren, Warren Edelman, are you on yet? Hi, great. Warren, how about yourself? You want to give us a little background on your experience? Joe, I don't know. Can you hear me? Uh, I think so. Okay, I just got out of an elevator, so bear with me a moment. You want to come back to you in a moment? Yes, please. Great, great. I'm going to jump on to Scott Kriegel then. Scott, are you are you around? <coughs> Doesn't look like Scott's one just yet. Um, okay. So let's just talk a little bit about the, about the uh, some of the programs that came out, and then Jacob, I talk about it. When Warren jumps on, he can. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to him in a moment. So we talked on Friday. We spoke on Friday about you know the stimulus plan, the money for Americans, the checks coming out to everybody. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. 
we spoke about that a little bit. I think a lot of the areas that people had questions about was the unemployment for the self-employed and the payroll protection plan as far as whether self-employed and sole proprietors can apply for that. And there was a lot of confusion about whether you can apply for both or not. Um, and I think that's where we had a lot of conversations on Friday. And we wound up going a little, a little bit extra with the, the Q&A at the end there just to explain some of that. Um, let's see, uh, Warren, you available yet? Are you back on? I am here. Okay, great. great. How about you give us a quick little bio on yourself and then we'll, we'll start some of the conversations. Sure, sure. I uh, started out in accounting with a small local firm, moved on to a national firm. And in 94, I went out on my own. And so for the past 30 years, we've been servicing small businesses to medium-sized businesses. And uh, it's been quite challenging this last week in assisting clients. We probably spent 80 hours or so helping people out through this and I look thank you for having me Warren thanks for jumping on I sure. appreciate it and um, you know I think between Jacob Warren and myself and I've been doing this for 30 years myself as a as a practitioner in the CPA practice um, the last 10 of which I've had my own practice working with small businesses and self-employed individuals before coming over to uh, KW Philadelphia so I think between the three of us and if Scott has an opportunity to jump on, we have a lot of experience there to, to speak about this. So, you know, Scott um, is coming in any second. Okay, great, great. Yeah, I just hopped in. So, thanks. Oh, Scott, great. If you can, uh, you know, we just started so far just giving a brief overview, and Jake and Warren were able to give a little brief bio about themselves. How about a little bit about you and your experience? What, what you, how you know about some of this stuff? <laughs> well, uh, probably know maybe just a little bit but uh it's um yeah I've, I've been running a small cpa firm uh for the last 10 years um working with uh sort of area yeah. KW agents and uh market centers uh for probably the last eight years and uh you know this uh this new CARES Act and uh, some of these provisions, uh, there's, some, there's some great opportunities here for um, even uh, small business, you know, real estate agents. So yeah, we'll, we'll kind of hit on some of these uh, options for you. Great, great. So, so does anybody want to jump off first and, and answer one of the, the, the questions as far as unemployment, I think one of the biggest questions I've heard the other day was unemployment and the payroll protection plan. Um, which one do you apply for? Can you apply for both? So, hey, Joe. Yes. So, you can apply for both. Uh, on the application for the PPP, it does ask you if you've applied for any other SBA funding. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that if you've already applied for the idle loan that they can incorporate the two together so right, I, I, my I, actual understanding is that yeah. you have to incorporate the the economic it's the, the idle is the economic industry disaster loan and that has to be refinanced by the payroll protection if i'm not mistaken um i think that has to roll into the, the amount that you uh, that loan takes into effect you're, you're right i believe it does yes yeah. And, and as far as the unemployment, I mean, my understanding is you, you can't benefit from two different programs at the same time. But number one, you don't know if you're going to get approved for the PPP, the, the payroll protection plan program. Okay. So I don't see why you can't apply for the unemployment. And then if you get the, the payroll protection program, then not apply for those weeks where you have the 10 weeks of the payroll protection in, in place. Um, Jacob or Scott, you want to jump in on there on some thoughts? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I guess what, what I want to say is, you know, just uh, I just want to stress the urgency of the need to apply for payroll protection now. Um, it just came out on Friday. Only a, a couple lenders like Bank of America, Meridian were accepting applications. Uh, all the other lenders are accepting today. Uh, but uh, the money is going to go very quickly. Um, I just saw an article about an hour ago that Wells Fargo already exhausted their $10 billion allowance for the program. 
uh, on Sunday. Uh, and you know, it's a good, good thing I switched uh, my firm to m and Bank about, <laughs> about six or nine months ago because uh, I finished my application with them this morning. But um, if you think you're going to qualify for PPP or you're not sure, I would stop whatever you're doing today and apply, like, you know, learn about it. If you qualify, figure if you can see if you can apply through your bank or lender and apply now. Um, and your quick details, you know, if you have employees or you're an employee, like you have an S-Corp set up, uh, you can apply for the PPP and potentially get money uh, to cover payroll uh, for a couple months that you may end up not having to give back. It may end up being a non-taxable grant. It's really something we haven't seen before, and it's a it's a huge opportunity uh, to sort of help make sure that you're going to be funded the next couple months, or you can you know, pay your staff, pay your employees if you have employees. Um, you know, if you're self-employed, you may be able to apply as well. As well, so again, I would I just want to stress the timeliness of that. But yeah, I mean, you may be able to also apply for unemployment. Um, I mean, the thing with realtors, I think, is from what I'm seeing with my clients, some of them, you know, some of my clients were still able to close transactions in March and they still have some transactions this month and maybe May that are going to close that were, you know, sort of on the books prior to everything happening with COVID-19. So, yeah, I don't know how much you're going to qualify for unemployment if you're still bringing in good money. Uh, but obviously, like, I think the summer months are going to be quieter. Uh, you know, so that's yeah, probably a time where a lot of people would qualify for unemployment. Um, so as just, just a couple things there I wanted to throw out. I have to agree with that with the, with the applying for the, the payroll protection program. I mean, jump on that and get those applications in because you just don't know what's going to happen. And in my opinion is if you're one of the successful ones and you're making income throughout all this and, and your income doesn't drop off, that's great. But uh, if it doesn't, I mean, you know, you've got a 1% loan out there. They have to repay and you can't get insurance for less than that kind of money. Uh, I think just from a cash flow standpoint to make sure everything's okay, apply for that loan. And if at the end of the day, if you don't need it, you're not going to use it for the funds that it provides for payroll, rent, utilities, things like that. Um, you know, repay it. Just leave it in the bank and repay it if you're one of the lucky ones that doesn't actually have to need to tap it. Yeah, I agreed. Um, yeah, a lot of my clients, you know, have been sort of asking specific questions like, you know, how does the calculation work for how you repay it? Like, what's the formula? Can we do projections for it? And I'm kind of like, just like, don't worry about that right now. Like, you just need to get this in. Like, you got to get it in now before it disappears. Like, they might add more money to it, but there's no guarantee. So, like, you know, if you don't, uh, if you don't get in your application the next day or two or three, you know, there's a good chance that the money's going to be gone. You know, somebody put a, a question here in the chat box is, can you apply to multiple banks in case the bank you apply for has exhausted their funds to prevent missing? So that's a good question, actually. I, I, I don't think you can. I think it's one application. Um, I don't know if you put it in multiple banks, that's going to save you any, put get you in line any faster. Guys, you have any thoughts on that? I'm not really sure I, I know the right answer on that, but what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I apply through the bank that you do business with now, uh, it, as long as you can and you qualify. Uh, I know my bank, m and isn't accepting applications from anyone that didn't have a business bank account with them as of February 15th. Um, so you, you want to apply through the bank that you already have a relationship with, and that's your best opportunity to get approved. Um, if they're not accepting applications, then you should try another one like Bank of America, but you can really only do one application. Yeah, that's my thought as well. And I, I know, as a matter of fact, I spoke to Citizens Bank, and they're only accepting applications from their customers. They're, if you're not a customer of theirs, they're not taking that application. Yeah. Hey, uh, <clears throat> Joe, can I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I, can I uh, do a screen share? And uh, I, I want to walk through maybe, um, maybe some example of Okay, if I go unemployment or the PPP, and this might help kind of break it down to, you know, maybe thinking through what might be a, a good option, you know, for, for people. To think. That'd be great. Now, the question is, can, can you do that screen share or is there something, I think Barb is actually host. All right, you're up there. Great. Yeah, cool. Um, one, well, one uh, quick note, if uh, here's a good site, um, if you want to try to follow things on the state unemployment, um, uc.pa.gov. Uh, 
ages COVID-19. Um, you know, obviously they're updating. They've got information about self-employed. This is going to be most of you. Um, and uh, so this, this might be helpful um, sort of when you think about next steps. As far as I understand, there's nothing that a sole proprietor can yet apply for through the state. Um, they, they just, they, they're not built that way. They're built for wages. So, um, they, they have to build something that can accommodate a sole proprietor's unique tax situation. The last but, thing uh, I read about Scott that is that that's going to be coming out on April 10th is the first you can apply as a self-employed okay. individual. Now, if they're ready by then, you know, who knows, but that's what they're saying at this point. Okay. Okay. Awesome. That's on the UC site. Um, yes. On the UC site. Okay. Okay. Um, so if, uh, if, if we want to look at this, uh, little worksheet spreadsheet, you know, I kind of took some assumptions. Okay. And, uh, you know, if, if someone was to claim unemployment, um, you know, you're going to be capped at $573 per week. And, you know, that amounts to, sort of a salary or a profit of a, between 50 and $60,000 a year. So, so you're going to be capped at 573. So um, they did extend unemployment beyond the traditional 26 weeks to 39. So at best, you might, <laughs> um, wait for that. Uh, so at best, you know, hey over guys, if, sorry, Scott, let me just interrupt you one really quickly. So guys, if you're not muted and you're not speaking, can you please mute yourself? Because we can't. Go, I want other everything. call. Let me call you back. Billy, can you please mute yourself? Okay, guys, can you please mute yourselves if you are not muted? and you're not speaking, please, please mute yourselves because we can hear everything. Thank you. Thanks, Tori. Go ahead, Scott. Sorry about that. All right. No, cool. Um, so, you know, at best, you know, you, you've got 39 weeks of unemployment benefits uh, capped at 573 uh, per week. So you, you may yield for yourself $22,000. Uh, now, we do have this new federal subsidy um, All right, that, no. That's gonna um, extend through July thirty first. So, Nothing black. Flat lid, please. <laughs> so let's let let's say you know you get twelve weeks of of that subsidy. Um, that's about seventy two hundred dollars. Um, so at best, you know, over a nine month period, you could. Uh, achieve twenty nine thousand dollars from the state of Pennsylvania's unemployment um, rolls. Um, now, what does it mean to be on unemployment? Well, you're not supposed to be working, right? <laughs> you're unable to work, and uh, you know. So, so there, there's a an element of I don't want to necessarily say integrity, but you know, you have to get in there every couple of weeks and disclose what you may or may not be doing for work. Um, you need to disclose any sources of income. Um, as Jacob said, you may have some tailing, um, you know, settlements, um, profit share, you know, pieces coming through. You know, each item of income that you are continuing to receive, you have to disclose that, which may actually reduce that max benefit anyway. Right. Well, I have a, Scott, I have a question, John Belarus. Yeah. So the 573 uh, per week, up to 39 weeks, and is that 600 on top of the 573 week? It is, yes. yes. Okay, thank yep. you. Hey, yep. Scott, let me ask you a question since you brought something up. You were talking about not able to work. Um, a lot of agents are working. They are working, but right. they're not earning because their pipeline is three, four months out before they actually receive something. Right. So they can be working, they can be showing homes, they can be talking to buyers and sellers, but they're not earning anything. Right. 
that would constitute as unemployment, not, not available to work, but not working, correct? As long as they're not receiving some kind of commission check. Um, you know, if, if, if you look at it from an employee standpoint, um, you know, that employee who's claiming unemployment, you cannot keep, keep them working or require them to work um, and, and then allow them to receive unemployment. So that, that's how I see it, you know, as it relates to um, an employee. So now that they've opened it up to sole proprietors, I don't, I don't see how that logic is any different. Um, yeah, and Scott, it's John Valeris, sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know I had some questions about independent contractors, you know, the uh, agents, something was going to be instituted, I believe, this week. It, can agents themselves, is, are they included in the unemployment if, if they're not receiving commissions or is it based on past commissions as long as they don't receive any future commissions? Is that, is that apply to agents at all? It, it, it does. It does. And, and maybe, it, maybe if we work through sort of an example, you know, that um, it, it'll have some applicability to unemployment um, as it does to the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, but sole proprietors are going to file based upon their net Schedule C. Um, and again, this is unemployment is built around employees with wages. They're not built around net schedule C filers. So they've got to figure out, all right, well, how are we going to count a sole proprietor's income less their expenses <laughs> to get their net profit um, on a biweekly basis? You know, they, they can get that from the, the start, but, you know, on those regular, you know, biweekly claims, um, you know, a regular employee has, oh, well, this is what I earned. Um, and then they can, they can use that. A sole proprietor is going to be a little bit different because it's much more fluid. Um, but I want to, part, part of what this goal is to, to maybe highlight this Paycheck Protection Program loan. Um, Scott, sorry, I just want to interrupt you really quickly before you go any further. Guys, if you have any questions, please, there's a little box at the bottom that says chat. Please type all your questions in that chat box. There's um, almost 100 people on this call. And if everyone jumps in and starts asking questions, we're going to be on here all day long. So if you have any questions, type them in there. We're going to make sure that we do a full Q&A session, session as we go along. So type the questions in there. We'll make sure we go through them. That way we're not kind of interrupting throughout the whole call. Yeah, and, 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 and I think this, this piece can, can go uh, per, pretty uh, efficiently. Um, you know, under the PPP program, um, you know, you're going to use, so some of you might be organized as an S corporation and you take, a, you know, a small salary or maybe you pay an assistant and have some, some wages. Um, let's just say that your S corp pays out 75000 in in wages. Um, and then, or let's say you're just, you know, you're a sole proprietor and you have a net profit of 75,000. Um, for the, the PPP program, they allow you to add in your health insurance premiums paid, uh, as well as any contributions to, you know, a simple or a SEP um, retirement plan. Um, so let, to get your total wages for the year for the past 12 months. And so let's say that that's $90,000, same thing for a sole proprietor. And the, the program calculation says, all right, what's your average? And then we'll multiply that by 2.5 to get you your loan amount. So average payroll is 7,500 times 2.5 is a little over 18, almost $19,000. Now, here's the biggest difference between your Paycheck Protection Program loan versus your unemployment claim. One, you're working, right? <laughs> um, you're also getting $19,000 dropped into your bank account in two weeks. Unemployment, you're gonna get that in increments of $1,200, you know, so long as you're not working. 
So the minute you start working or that benefit gets reduced, you know, you may very well not get the full amount. Okay. And again, this is maxing out over nine months. This is really looking at your last, you know, 12 months or four quarters of payroll and profit to, to get your, your number. So the treasury will deposit, um, deposit that directly into your bank account. And then you have eight weeks from the date that money hits your account to spend it on payroll, health insurance, retirement plan contributions, rent or utilities. And so long as you do that and you keep the same number of employees that you had last year. So let's say you had yourself and maybe an assistant or a couple of other assistants. Um, the design is that they, they want you to maintain, you know, your employment levels. So if you maintain your employment levels and you spend all 18750 that loan is 100% non-repayable and it's um, forgivable, uh, 100%. And so um, you're not you're out of pocket really for anything there. Um, if you don't spend um, the full, let's say you only spend, you know, 13,000. So you have 5,000 left. Um, that 5,000 then does become repayable, but that's over a two year period and it carries interest at 1%. So, um, that's just sort of a, you know, an attempt that, you know, we kind of worked through that might give you guys some, some insight. Um, you know, as Jacob said, and, uh, you know, Warren, you, you want to get these um, applications into your, the bank that you use for your business accounts um, as soon as possible. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little indifferent on how quickly we're going to run out. Um, I was on a chamber of com uh, you know, the U S chamber um, even two weeks ago when the cares act was first, um, you know, passed and they communicated at that point that the allocation of the $2 trillion that put like 350 billion to uh, these PPP loans, they said that it, that amount was determined based upon all the businesses in the U S with less than 500 employees and paying payroll for eight weeks. So the, they had some data um, and, and, and I know, um, you know, Pennsylvania is actually the fifth largest allocation of that 350 kind of goes like California, New York, Texas, I think Florida, and then Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania does have a, a big lion's share of, uh, of that 350 funding. But um, again, I don't think they're going to run out like this week, but I don't want to be the guy sitting on the outside. So I don't want any of you to be on the outside either. So if you can get your stuff together, um, I would, I would do everything you can to, to get that in place with your banks this week. Great. Scott, that's some great information. I really like that spreadsheet as far as lining that out and showing the different analysis between the two. Hey Warren, I'll, I'll throw it to you to see if you have anything you want to add in there. I do. You know, each bank that I've dealt with so far has different requirements in terms of the information that they're requesting. Some banks are asking it like Bank of America on an annualized basis. Mm -hmm. PNC is asking for your payroll information and, and other payroll costs on a monthly basis. And they're looking for documentation as far as uh, payroll records on a monthly basis. And they're asking for uploads, payroll tax forms, some banks are asking if you're an LLC for your formation documents from the state. So there's a lot of different requirements for each bank. So you should check with your bank and gather all your documents together before you start the process. A lot of the banks time you out while you're in the middle of the application. If you're searching around for documents, 
to really be prepared when you start the application or you're going to go through it a couple of times to finally finish it. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people on the phone call today are agents versus owners of small businesses. I think we have a lot right. of agents. So a lot of them aren't going to be able to go and grab their payroll tax records. They're going to be looking at their Schedule Cs and they'll be looking at their P&Ls year to date and their P&Ls yeah. for 2019 if they haven't filed. Yeah, if you haven't filed your 19 um, Schedule C, um, the bank should be accepting sort of an internal P&L, you know, that, that you uh, develop. If you don't even do that, that has to be, you know, uh, effort number one is get your, your own internal P&L put together. Right. They're also asking, Joe, I'm sorry. They're also asking for copies of your 1099s, you know, if you're self-employed, to have those available as well. That's correct, yes. Um, Joe, do you want to go to some questions since we're halfway through? Sure. Let's, let's jump on a few questions. I saw a couple there already. Do you want me to read them? Uh, sure. That'd be great. That way, that way the three of you guys can answer. Um, okay. So I think we answered that first one. Um, second one is I own several rental properties. Some are in an LLC and some are in my own personal name. How do I address these? Jake, anybody have a specific answer? I'll throw it out to Jacob. He hasn't spoken in a while. Give him a chance to speak. Hey, it could be there. I think you need to unmute. Yeah, I was, yeah, sorry, I was muted Great. for a sec. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have rental properties that are in LLCs versus your personal name, I mean, if, if the LLCs are disregarded LLCs and everything is reported through your personal returns, then, you know, really everything would show up there anyway. Um, with regards to whether you qualify for the, you know, for the, the PPP, uh, you, know, you, you probably... Uh, if it's not, you know, rental real estate is not earned income. Uh, so you, know, you probably, uh, you probably wouldn't unless you have like sort of like a management company or other earned income that's available. Um, but I mean, there might be other loans and grants that you could apply for that just aren't the PPP. Like there's a, you know, there's other stuff out there. Um, yeah. So that, that's sort of my quick general answer on that. Okay. Great. Yeah. I think, I think those that have rental um, activities, did get kind of left out of, of the CARES Act. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really geared towards those active trader businesses. Yeah. But so guys, let me ask, let me ask Warren, four, Jacob, right. and Scott a question real quick. Because somebody posed me a question the other day. If you are a real estate professional and you have rental income properties, you know, and this is like a little tax talk, so I don't want to bore anybody, but those are really – you know, those turn from passive to active income. Do you think those apply under the PPP because you're a real estate professional? Interesting. Uh, I don't know. No, it wouldn't because it's not earned income. Yeah. yeah it's, you, not, you got, it's not subject to self-employment tax. Do you think it's right. only what's available by self-employment? What's applicable to self-employment tax? Right. So if you're, you know, if you have projects and you're paying yourself management fees, development fees, you know, guarantee asset management fees, whatever, like that's the earned income. That's what would qualify the actual rental real estate on schedule E or form 8825 on your partnership returns, you know, wouldn't uh, factor in here. Okay. Okay, good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for adding in. If, if, if um, and I got a little bit technical, I think a little bit, but, you know, just trying to look for some other avenues, you know, creative as far as how we can apply for those. Joe, I did see that uh, for the, or the SBA website, under that idle loan, that rental real estate is uh, are allowed to file for that disaster loan. Again, it's a loan, uh, but that is out there and it's on their website. That's interesting, good. So that's another opportunity if you wanna look at the uh, SBA website for the economic injury disaster loans, I think that's what the IDL stands for. Um, yep. there's, some, there's some opportunity there to, to take a loan it will not be forgiven. That's not a forgivable loan, just to be sure. All right, Tori, uh, what else you have? Okay, so Scott, would you be willing to share that spreadsheet that you created? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll uh, do you want me to, uh, uh, maybe I'll send it to you afterwards and uh, you guys can distribute it as, as needed. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Thank Scott. You. That's great.
Yeah. Um, are the federal and state unemployment compensation taxable or not? The unemployment compensation is taxable, yes. I don't, you know. I the federal one think also, yes. It is taxable, but the, the, the proceeds from the PPP, the payroll protection pro, uh, no. program, you know, I don't think they are, but I, I you know, I wouldn't surprise me if that changed. Joe, so the, the, that. the PPP loan is a loan and the forgiveness portion of that loan is not taxable. It's and not, they actually said that that's not taxable, the forgiveness portion. They come out and say that, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, real, real quick, I, I do want to say that, you know, they keep changing with a lot of these programs, they're changing the, the terms on like a daily basis. You know, like the interest rate for the PPP used to be half a percent and they increased it to 1%. Uh, I saw that they just announced that any, any business with a net profit of 5 million and over won't qualify for the PPP, even if there's less than 500 employees. So they are tweaking things on a daily basis. I would sort of keep that in mind. Like some of what you're hearing today may change a little bit, even as early as today or tomorrow. Um, so you got you to keep up with it and uh, you know, keep watching uh, what, what's coming out. Yeah, the first part, of the, when they first announced the loan, it was 10 years at a cap of 4%. And then I think they got right. wind of people looking to refinance all their existing debt and do different things and kind of made it more manageable down to what is now a, a two-year repayment at 1%. Hey guys, this is Gaurav. If I may jump in, you have eight, 22 minutes left. Can we focus the last 22 minutes on independent contractors? I think 90% of the people on this phone call are uh, eight. Uh, if you can ask questions and focus on uh, unemployment, uh, independent contractors and stuff like that, please. Okay. Great. Um, should we base last year's income for unemployment for this year? I haven't seen, yeah, uh, because the site, the state hasn't um, set up what they want to see yet, we don't know. Um, I, or at least I don't know. So um, if, if anybody else has insight for sole proprietors. Um, yeah, and I mean, the next question kind of piggybacks on that. It says, I applied Friday night and the UC website didn't even ask me what my earnings were. How would they determine how much the unemployment amount would be? Yeah, you're not supposed, if you're a sole proprietor, you're not supposed to use the traditional unemployment application process. It, so, um, maybe, 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 it was, maybe it was submitted at, at a wrong section as an employee. So. Right, and it's my understanding, they don't even have information on if you're self-employed how to file yet. Is that correct? Yes. So this next question kind of piggybacks on that. Do we apply for the subsidy separately or is it automatically included in the UC application? Also, can we file today? So, so as far as my understanding with the unemployment comp and guys, you know, please jump in. Um, you can go on and file your initial claim, but not your biweekly claim. So the initial claim just basically sets you up and says, hey, I, I want unemployment. Um, here's why I should have made, and I'm looking for the, the, the approval and a PIN number to go on and file the biweekly claim. So therefore that generates a check to you if you're approved. So I think you can go on and I've seen people do it already. And I've, I've walked through the process a couple times and it, you can check where you are self-employed and it asks you a whole different set of questions that relate to self-employed as far as why you're out of work or why that is and what the case is and what you think you're, you're, your earnings were that you missed out on, but you can't file that bi-weekly claim that will generate a check to you yet until you get that letter back to, from them with a PIN number, and that's not going to open up until Friday. Um, you guys have any thoughts on that? or? I mean, has anybody seen where you can't do the initial claim yet? Jacob, Warren, Scott, anybody want to jump in? I'm on the state's website now. And, and it just says that the self-employed should not use or not file a claim through the existing online system. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and they provide no other guidance. So gotcha. they're really lousy. I, I put a link in the chat of, you know, some pretty, like, most recent stuff, you know, for, for that. Um, yeah, I had walked through that about 
I'm going to say about a week or so ago with somebody and it, it allowed you to, it, again, it asked you questions about your self-employment and whatnot. Maybe that's just, maybe they've just updated their, their sites. And as far as the payroll protection plan, that subsidy, that is not through the unemployment site. That you have to contact the bank directly. Contact someone that you have a relationship with at the bank you use and ask them, you know, how do you apply for the SBA through them? That is, has nothing to do with the unemployment system. Okay, next Joe, question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I know, I know you had mentioned you didn't really want to hit on the stimulus checks, um, but that actually might have some of the quickest applicability for, for a lot of people. Um, do you feel like that's pretty well understood? Um, because that could be the first check you actually see, um, you know, if you qualify. So, um, yeah, and that I think for everybody is just, you know, the only thing to say about that is if you haven't filed the 18 or 19 tax return, right. either one, um, you need to get those filed, at least an 18. Um, if you're a couple years back, then you may not get that check. Um, right. but, but those are the first funds you're going to see. Um, when, when you guys want to jump in, I, I've talked about a little bit yeah. on here on Friday. If one of you guys want to jump in and talk about it and give a little just um, any thoughts you might have on it quickly. Yeah, that for the stimulus, sure. Um, right. So, I mean, the quick background on stimulus is that uh, depending on your income level, you know, you can get a $1,200 per person check that's basically non-taxable income. Um, you know, if you're married, it could be $1,200 per person. If you have kids that are 16 or younger, you could get $500 per, per child. Um, the, you know, they, uh, the income levels that they use are based on your either your 2018 returns or your 2019 if you file 2019. Um, if you made a lot more money in 2019 compared to 2018, you may want to hold off on filing your tax return until you get uh, a stimulus check. Uh, we're doing that for a lot of our clients that, you know, it's a married couple that made 130000 in 2018, but made, you know, 230 in 2019. You know, we're sort of holding off on filing the returns uh, until they get their stimulus payment. Um, you know, ultimately, the, the stimulus payment really is a, it's a prepayment of what's going to be a 2020 tax credit. So it could be trued up in 2020, but either way, people want the money now. Uh, so, you know, yeah, you know, if, uh, if the income levels are you know, pretty much like set up to $75,000, if you're single up to 150,000, uh, if you're married filing joint, you'll get, you should get the full stimulus. If you're between 75 and hundred, if you're single or 150,000 and around 200,000 married filing joint, then it starts to phase out. Um, if you have children, then you, your income levels could be a little bit higher there. Um, there are calculators online, though, so you can just go online, search like stimulus payment calculator and figure out what you would get based on your last filed tax return. Um, but if, yeah, again, if you haven't filed 2018 or 2019, uh, you, you probably want to file something uh, pretty soon or else uh, you're, you may have to wait until like filing your 2020 returns to get, uh, to get a stimulus, uh, potentially get a stimulus payment. Hey, Tori, um, where, where are we at here? Okay, so the next question uh, is, does the eight weeks payroll start now to qualify or after the loan is received if we are shut down as non-essential business? The eight weeks will start when the treasury deposits it into your business bank account. Um, okay, you answered the next question already. Um, you answered that question. Is PPP and UC based on growth or net? Gross wages? It's based on gross wages. Okay. Um, you also and if you're self employed, it's the net income. Just throw that out. Okay. Um, on the website, it says that EIDL is forgivable, but I'm hearing something different here. Can you please verify? Uh, the, the EIDL is not forgivable. Um, however, if you do, if you have already applied for an EIDL and you get the payment, the payroll protection plan proceeds, that has to be rolled into it. Um, so at that point, the, the payroll protection would be forgivable for the payroll, but, but the EIDL on its own, I do not believe is a forgivable loan. I think sure, the, the, first, only... the first 10 is. Yeah. Right. 
Uh, and actually, if you don't the qualify. Team. The EIDL in its real intention is to provide a loan of up to, I think, $2 million um, or up to a million, over 350, over a standard SBA loan. Um, and then the first 10 is supposed to be a, a quick advance to sort of like get you started. Um, and that portion um, is intended again to be a grant or a forgivable piece. That's correct. Towards yes. a bigger loan. Um, is the $2,400 per family that the government is giving taxable? The, the stimulus payment is not taxable. Okay. Hey, um, you know, is that going to be, if you remember when Bush did them back in the 90s, it was an advance and it yeah. basically reduced what your typical refund would be in the future. Is this real money or is this just an advance on what your refunds, your, your next year's taxes basically? My, my understanding, it's a good question. I mean, I'm not 100% sure. My understanding is that it's a right now, if you get it, it's supposed to be a, a non taxable payment. However, the, really, it's a 2020 tax credit that you, if you do qualify, if, or it's a credit for 2020 that if you qualify for, then it would be non taxable. But if you, if you make more money in 2020, you may have to pay it back and it might right. be true up then. Um, that's my best understanding of it right now. But, but I'm, Again, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a new refundable tax credit um, of 2020. So yeah, that's how they term it. But as Jacob explained, um, that is how it works. Um, if you do receive the um, stimulus payment and your income is over the threshold in 2020 when you file your return, um, you would have to repay that back. Tori, can you ask a question from Dina Patton? It's a pretty good, interesting question. I have two rental properties. Yes, I have two rental properties that will become vacant next month because I am unable to show these. I am assuming they will be they will be vacant for a while. Is there any loan that will help me pay the, for these mortgages in this situation? Hey, Warren, you have any thoughts on that? I'm going to go back and say that the the SBA the uh, the idle loan, the emergency loan, would probably be the best avenue. Other than that, there's nothing out there as far as the PPP that doesn't qualify for that. So I would try the SBA. Or even negotiate with your current lender. Um, you know, That's ask good. for six month deferment, you know, something um, there. That's probably the most efficient avenue. SBA could take a while, um, so. Okay, um, how about for flips? I have two flips I'm currently working on and construction has halted. My monthly carrying costs, uh, hard money taxes, utilities alone are almost $9,000 a month. Does PPL cover that? No, no. Jump what? In? Well, I guess what I would say is that the, the PPP, again, is for like earned income. And if you're a flipper, like that's what you do for a living and you have a history of reporting profits, then you might be able to use that as a basis for filing the PPP. Uh, but it would be you know, based on profits from flips you've reported in, in previous years. Assuming you're reporting it as earned, like Schedule C or earned, earned income subject to self-employment taxes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, are there any downsides or reasons why agents should not apply for unemployment? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, there's still a lot of gray here, but if you think you qualify or you may qualify when the self-employed application does come out, you know, which it hasn't yet, but when it does come out, I don't think there's a downside to applying as long as you answer all of the questions honestly and truthfully. Um, the worst that happens is I guess you're denied or if you do get unemployment, but you do end up making money, you have to pay back the unemployment. Um, but yeah, I just, as long as you're honest with your application and if, if there's any gray or you're not sure if you qualify, I would just go ahead and go ahead and apply. Um, that's my take. I would agree with that. I would agree to, you know, apply for it. If you're not, if you're, if you're not sure, apply for it, see how it comes out. And just when it asks if you made money last week or if you have earnings, you know, just be truthful about it and, and you should be okay. 
Yeah, and so then maybe you have to look at it in conjunction with the PPP. You know, yes, the PPP is a little more work, but you know, if uh, if you get stonewalled, <laughs> you know, in um, making that application for unemployment, if you put all your all your you know cards in that bucket, um, you know, then you're going to be eight weeks down the line with no money. And uh, whereas the PPP, you know, can, can drop some, some nice money, you know, into your bank account here pretty quick. Um, so Scott uh, gave us a really good resource for the, um, uh, the UC link. So I'll put that in with that spreadsheet that he's sending to us. And then Andrea asked us for the exact address to go to file for the unemployment for sole proprietors. So we'll put that in there as well when we send that out. Uh, next question was, if I do not file for unemployment, will I still get the $1,200 stimulus check? Yeah, one has nothing to do with the other. The, the, the stimulus check has nothing to do with unemployment. That's based on your past tax filings. Is the April is April 10th the earliest independent contractors and self-employed will be able to apply? Right now, it looks like it's only for employers that give W-2. Please advise. Yeah, it sounds like April 10th is the first, first date that you're able to apply. Um, I think we all agree with that, right? Yes. If you do not normally get your refund electronically, where do you go to input bank info so IRS can send you money direct to your bank account? How long will we? How long will it be till we get the twenty four hundred? Well, I know if you filed the tax return in the past and they've given them your direct deposit information, or if they have it through some other manner, like if you receive Social Security income of some sort. Um, they already have that and it's going to go directly in your account. If not, they will start sending checks, but those checks are going out in waves because I think there's some huge number they have to do in print. It's going to take a while. Um, I did hear somebody was telling me that they opened up a website where you can enter your direct deposit information for the stimulus check, but I don't have any information on that. You guys, have you guys seen anything about that? I heard the same. I haven't seen the site though. I yeah, I haven't seen it. I make make sure it's legit before you enter your. Yeah, bank. true. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. If it's yeah, if it's not the IRS.gov, I'd be a little concerned. I wouldn't do it, right? Yeah, you have to be really careful about where you put that information. I mean, it's it's and and there's going to be scams out there to grab your account numbers as it is. So, yeah, yeah I would probably only do it with the filing of my return, um, unless you're you're you better be pretty confident when you're putting that information out there. Yeah. Now, and I also did hear uh, they were targeting the end of April, like third week of April, you know, that everybody would have the stimulus checks. So um, they'd be done by the third week of April. Yeah. By the end of April. Yeah. Okay. So I so, suspect, yeah, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start seeing the flood of that happening. Um, what about the agents who started their career in 2020 and do not have 2018, 2019 tax returns within this career? Well, the, yeah. the packages apply to people that were in business as of February 15th and had payroll as of February 15th. I think the challenge there is going to be for one for unemployment that always usually goes back. What is it? I think it's the second prior quarter they look at when you file for unemployment. And for the, the payroll protection plan, I mean, supposedly the money's available for it, but I don't know how the banks will substantiate that. Uh, any, any of you guys have any thoughts on that? The interesting thing is the, the PPP loan is based off of net income for sole proprietors uh, on, on a monthly average. So if you were only in business for two and a half months in, in 2020, I would use the, the two and a half month average take an average of the two and a half months of, or the one and a half months of earning in order to compute it. Scott, Jacob, any thoughts? And, you know, a lot of it might even just entail a conversation with your bank um, because, you know, they're going to be the ones that are going to process it. Um, and uh, and if, they'll, if they'll accept, you know, just your 2020 activity, um, you know, assuming you were in business, you know, before February 15, uh, there, there's a good chance that you could even get uh, the PPP off of, like Warren said, those first couple of months of activity. 
Um, I am an LLC and was able to set up my account to wait for my PIN. Will I have to reapply? I'm not sure I understand what that is about. Sounds like unemployment. Yeah, and I think the sec this next like, question kind like of it. works with that too. I filed for unemployment on the UC site, but it looks like I should have waited until 410. If denied, can I refile? I think it's kind of the same question. Yeah, I, my guess is anything that's like inapplicable, <laughs> do it correctly, you know, um, just because they're, they're not going to be able to process it. So on the 10th, go back in and and resubmit because um, I don't think they'll transfer it over. Um, if they have our bank info from paying taxes, will they use that for direct deposit of the stimulus check? Yes. So we're at the end of the questions. Does anyone else have any other questions they want to quickly type? Oh, uh, how many months stimulus checks do you think we will that's that's the question. <laughs> oh, yes. always, how many months do you think we will get? <laughs> well, well, there's only one stimulus payment now, you know. But if uh, this situation goes on longer than two, three months, then they may have to do another one. But as of now, it's just a one-time, one-off payment. Okay. Um, that, okay. Again, that's it for right now. Um, I'm going to save this chat. Um, and then if you guys have any other resources that you think that we should have, I'm going to put together a one sheet document and put them all in there to send out to everyone along with Scott, when you send over that, uh, mm -hmm. spreadsheet, I'll add that in there too. Yeah. Can we have our host give their, um, contact information to see, um, uh how they can uh, do, uh, you know, uh, every, if they can give their uh, contact information uh, so others can reach you. Yeah, it would be good if we share everyone's contact information. So if anybody has any questions, they want to reach out to someone directly. Um, I assume Jacob, Warren, and Scott are all comfortable if we pass around their, their business contact information. Sure. Hey, Jeff, I just saw Justin's question pop up about ADP. Mm -hmm. Uh, ADP does have a, a great uh, report that they produce for the PPP filing. Good. I, I know they have, I know on their website it popped up that they had information there as far as um, uh, tracking the payroll moving forward. Um, I didn't realize they had a package like put together ready to go for the CARES package. That's interesting. Yes, they do. The only thing they would be missing if there was anything done outside of ADP uh, through health insurance or retirement plan outside of them that would not be captured in their report. Yeah. Great, great. Well, Tori, you think we cleared most of the questions there? You think we're okay? Anything new pop up that we should address? Um... Nope. The only Great. thing. Um, nope. That's it. Well, I want to thank everyone coming on. I want to really thank our, our three CPAs that jumped on the line today, Jacob Cohn, Warren Edelman, and Scott Kriegel. Um, I'll be sending out their contact information, some of these other things that people asked about, some website, uh, some website links to the PAUC site. Uh, Scott's spreadsheet that he was kind enough to share with us. I think that was very helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, reach out to one of us and we'll, we'll do the best we can to uh, help you through the process. Thank you everyone for coming and hope everyone has a great rest of the day and rest of the week. Thank you. Thanks okay. everyone. Take care. Bye -bye. Thanks, for out there. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.